Hi guys, this is Concise Reviews and today I'm going to tell you about the top 10 need to know hidden features for the Samsung S9 and S9 Plus. Okay, as I'm sure you know, to unlock the phone you can either push the button on the side to turn on the screen or you can hold your finger on the sensor on the back and that also does the same thing. But if for example you're driving and your phone's in a car cradle maybe, you might not have access to either of those buttons. So turned off by default for some reason, in the settings there's a way that you can turn on the screen just by holding your finger at the bottom of the device. So if you push down firmly it turns on and then you just need to put in your pattern. To turn this useful feature on it's real simple, just drag down the top, hit the cog to go into the settings menu, go to display, scroll down to navigation bar, and then you can see you've got this button here for hard press home button and you can toggle that on and off and then if you click into it you can also change the amount of pressure that's needed for that feature to work. Another easy and useful way to unlock the S9 and S9 Plus is just by using your voice so you don't have to even touch it, you just have to say the keyword and it will unlock the device and then respond to your question. So for example you can say, what's the capital of China? Beijing is the capital of China. So there you can see the device is unlocked, it's answered my question and I haven't even had to touch it. Now the Google Assistant may prompt you to do this when you're setting up the device but if not it's very simple to do. You just drag the top down, hit the cog to go into the settings, hit lock screen and security, hit smart lock, do your pattern to unlock it or your pin if that's what you've got set up and then the bottom option is one called voice match so you just click that. I've already got this set up so I've got the option to retrain voice model. If you haven't already done this there'll be an option there so that you can easily set it up and you just need to make sure that this switch is turned on. Having a big screen is great but especially on the S9 Plus where if you've got small hands sometimes using it with just one hand is a little bit tricky and you sort of worry that you're going to drop the phone so there's a, a setting that you can activate which allows you to simply swipe up from the corner and it makes the screen a lot smaller and manageable so that you can just use it as if it was a smaller phone without having to stretch up and worry about dropping the phone. And then once you're done, or if you want to maximize the screen again, you just hit the area outside of that and it goes into full screen. That's a really useful feature that I use quite a bit and turning it on is very simple. Again, you just drag down from the top and hit the cog to go into the settings. You want to go into advanced features and you can see there's an option there called one-handed mode. If you click into that, you can see there's two options. So there's gesture, which is the one I showed you where you can swipe up from the corner, or button, which is where you'd just push your finger three times on where the home button would be and it would have the same effect. So you can select which one of those you want and then just make sure it's turned on. Okay, this next one's gonna be really useful to you if you've got a screen protector on your phone, which I hope you do. Um, if you wanna check out my video on the best tempered glass screen protectors, just click this link at the top here. And this one basically allows you to make your screen a lot more sensitive so that it will respond to your touch a lot better, which is sometimes an issue if you've got a screen protector, particularly a tempered glass one. So to turn this on, again, it's in the settings, go to advanced features again, scroll down to the bottom, and there's an option here called touch sensitivity, and it specifically says increase the touch sensitivity of the screen for use with screen protectors. So just make sure that's turned on, and then you shouldn't have any issues. Okay, this one's going to be great for you if you like to listen to music from your phone over a Bluetooth device a lot. And what it basically allows you to do is split where two different audio sources play back. So you can have one coming from the speaker and one coming directly from your phone. I'll quickly show you that in action. So if I push play on music, it's going to come out of the Bluetooth speaker. But then if I go into another app like YouTube, S7, it's coming out of the phone speaker. And you can see with the S7 it's quite a dark image, but with the S9 it really adapts to allow... If you want to see that video, by the way, where I basically explain why it's worth upgrading to the S9, you can click this link in the top. Now to get this set up is again very easy. You first of all need to make sure that you're connected to the Bluetooth device that you want to set this up with. Then you just drag down from the top, go into settings, click on sounds and vibrations, scroll down to the bottom and click on separate app sound. And as I've got it set up at the moment, YouTube will come through the phone speaker. So that's a really useful feature, say if you're playing music through your car speaker or if you're at a party or something and you're playing music through a Bluetooth speaker. If you then went into Facebook or YouTube and started to play something, it would kill the music and it would start playing whatever you're watching through the speaker. So it's a really good way to separate that and keep them both playing at the same time. This next one's going to save you a lot of eye strain. If you're like most people in the world, you probably look at your phone quite late in the evening and quite early in the morning. And there's a setting in the Samsung's called blue light filter. So 
you can either click this to turn it on and you can see it makes the screen go sort of slightly yellower and less harsh on the eyes but this really makes a difference to, uh, to your eyes when it's in a poorly lit room and results in a lot less eye strain so you can either just turn it on and off by dragging down from the top or if you hold your finger on it you can turn on as scheduled so you can either do it on sunset and sunrise times or you can set up a custom schedule to start and end at a specific time you can also adjust the opacity as well if you find it's a bit too sort of yellow you can turn it down a bit or turn it up if that suits you that's a feature that i keep set on sunset to sunrise and it's definitely a lot less harsh on your eyes when the room's not very well lit something that i found quite annoying with the s9 plus is i keep accidentally hitting the bixby button on the side and it turns on this annoying sound and starts to load bixby I'd rather that didn't work because I think Google Assistant is much better so for all my AI needs I'll just use Google Assistant. You can turn that button off so you just need to go through the setup ironically. Click confirm, I agree. So once you've set up Bixby, if you haven't done that already, you can turn it off by just pushing the Bixby button to go to Bixby Home. Push this sort of cog button in the top and then you can see there's a slider so by pushing that it's going to disable the Bixby key on the side and then if you accidentally push that anymore it's not going to bother you with Bixby again. Another great thing about the S9 and S9 Plus is that it's really easy to make use of this big tool screen and use two apps at once like you might do on a computer. So to do this you just hit the button in the bottom left which will open your recently used apps and then you can see that at the top of each window there's sort of one rectangle on top of the other one. If you push that it'll fill half the screen with one app and then you can choose another app to fill the bottom half so I'll click Gmail. You can easily change the amount of screen that's given to each app by just moving this blue slider up and down the screen and this is great uh, say for example if you had Google Maps open if you're walking somewhere and you wanted to look at something else on your phone and it's also great if you want to copy and paste text from one app to another one so you can just select some text copy then click in the other side of the screen hold it down paste and it's just very easy to do. And once you're done with split screens view, you can just drag that blue slider to the top or bottom and then that app will fill the whole screen. Another cool feature, if your screen's turned off and you quickly want to take a picture, you can just double tap the power key on the side and then take a picture within seconds so you're not going to miss that moment. That should be turned on by default, but if it's not, you can just unlock the phone, open the camera, hit the cog in the bottom left to go into settings, and then if you scroll right down to the bottom, there's an option called quick launch so you just wanted to make sure that that's toggled on. Right this one's also in the camera app but it's specific to the S9 Plus which has dual 12 megapixel rear cameras on the back one of them being a wide angle one being a telephoto lens so it's really easy to make use of that telephoto lens and use the two times optical zoom which is of course much better than just pinching in on the screen um, and using a digital zoom which of course loses quality in the pixel count so you just hit where it says times two on that small button there and you can see it zooms in and now Michelangelo is filling up twice as much of the screen. Right, so hopefully if that's some really useful hidden features for you if you've got the S9 or S9 Plus. If that was helpful for you, please like the video and hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more from Concise Reviews.